But as I said, we're going to look into that some more. Let me ask you, Pete, a little bit about these 18 hijackers. Do, do federal authorities know much about any of them? They do. They have learned about two of them, right? Or at least one of them? Well, they know, qu well, they know quite a bit about t uh, two of them. The mo uh, they may know more about others that we just haven't heard about yet, but they certainly know quite a bit about the two because what the sequence of events here is the passenger manifest list from one of the flights that left Boston leads them uh, along with a report from a passenger uh, who just happened to get in an argument apparently with one of the drivers when they parked their car at Logan Airport that led authorities to that car the car registration in turn and some additional documents found in the car lead them to the Venice Florida flight school where two men who've been publicly named their picture has been uh, now publicly shown uh, those two were known to have entered the United States sometime in the past year, have taken flight training in Venice, Florida for at least a year. They told the flight instructors that they had just come from uh, Hamburg, Germany, and interestingly enough, German authorities in Hamburg today detained someone in connection with this case, and they also gave their passports. So uh, a large number of uh, documentary uh, leads that the FBI can follow. They also used cash and credit cards to buy tickets and rent cars and hotel rooms. So, you know, this was a very well-planned attack in terms of the fact that it, no one seemed to know about it. It was carried off apparently by design, but they left a, a huge trail of clues behind them, lots of documentary evidence. They weren't trying very hard to cover their tracks apparently. Yeah, I thought one that was, thing, oh, Katie, I'm sorry, go ahead, Pete. Sure. Okay, one other thing. At least a couple of these hijackers show up on an FBI database. Once the FBI got the names of the suspected hijackers, they entered them into their enormous database and did get what they call some hits, indicating that uh, some of these names were at least suspected of being associated with terrorist groups. Now, that doesn't mean that they were terrorists or that they had committed any crimes. There's nothing to prevent someone who's on the FBI database from ever getting on an airplane. There was nothing that would have stopped them from boarding their plane. It's not a federal crime to be on the FBI's database list. So there were a few people in that category as well. Pete, can you tell me anything more about uh, this? Well, first of all, what I was interrupting you to say, and I'm sorry about that, was it's really pretty amazing what an extensive paper trail at least these two men who were on the manifest uh, left as they went about their business here in the states. Well, it really is because uh, if you look, for example, just at the Oklahoma City bombing, uh, Timothy McVeigh went to great lengths to try to cover his tracks uh, for the most part, used an alias, uh, used a prepaid calling card so that there wouldn't be any kind of telephone records. Uh, these folks apparently did none of that, used credit cards in their own names rented ca cars in their own names. You know, it's just the same kind of thing that happened in the first World Trade Center bombing. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the bomb plotters uh, also rented, uh, you know, filled out the rental application for the truck in their own names. So, you know, many aspects of highly detailed planning, but then obviously very sloppy things as well, leading some to speculate that perhaps that they wanted to be known after this had happened. Another thing that's very unusual about this case, just to state the obvious, Normally, when you have a terrorist attack, the terrorists themselves uh, flee. Here, the, the chief terrorists, of course, were killed along with everyone else. That makes uh, part of the investigation a little difficult, too, because you have the names on the flight list. But then how do you confirm that those people were actually on board those planes, other than simply the fact that they were on the manifest list? Now, that's pretty good proof, right. but it was, it's going to be virtually impossible to prove that they were really on those planes. And